Hi there YouTube, it's Mark here from Highrise Digital and a warm welcome back to the channel in the new year. I hope you had a happy new year and a lovely Christmas break. Um, and we're going to get into a new video today, but before we do, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it would be awesome if you would do that. There's a button underneath this video. And if you're enjoying this video, then please click like. If you've got any comments about what I'm doing in the video, then please leave them below and we'll get back to you. This video is all about... Ajax load more buttons. So when you have a post listing in WordPress, common trend at the moment amongst design is to not paginate those, but to have a button that you click, you press load more, and then the next page of results load into the page you're currently on, so you don't have to leave the current page. Now there are downsides to that, but it does seem quite a popular trend in design, and we have had to implement this recently on one of the projects we're working at, and I wanted to just talk through my solution as to how I did this, which was actually a lot easier than I thought. Now, I know there are probably some plugins out there that will do this for you, but I just wanted a nice, clean and simple way in which you could get this done. So let me talk you through how I have done this now. So first of all, I'm going to show you the actual website. This is still in stage and it's not a finished product by any means, but I'm going to show you the website. Now this is the news page, which is the blog home. So this is the post, sorry, the, the page used for posts in the back end. Um, and it lists all of the posts in the normal sort of loop. Um, and you can see we've actually got some sticky posts. Um, they don't really come into this at all, but um, these different ones here at the top are sticky posts. And then we've got a normal sort of grid of posts at the bottom here. And then we have this nice button here. And if I click the button, it kind of animates and spins around. And then there we go, the next ones load in and so forth. Okay. So that's the sort of thing that we're looking to achieve. And I wanted to talk about how I did this. So let me jump back to my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And, and I've got three files, that's all it is here. So the first one is the home.php template. Now that's the archive template that is used to deliver the blog home, the page for posts uh, template. Um, now what I'm doing here is getting access to the global WP query object, which is the current query that's taking place. So in this case, it's grabbing all of the, the latest posts. I'm going to need that in a minute. And then I've got the usual get header stuff. We've, we're outputting a featured image. We don't need to worry about that. We're outputting the archive title. So it says news. Don't need to worry about that. And line 49 here is where it gets interesting. Now we've got some, uh, we've got basically a div. It's a wrapper for the, for the news posts. And we've got some extra classes here, uh, which uh, allow it to sort of style like we wanted it to. But it's the important one. We've got this blog grid class. And this is the class we're going to use uh, in our JavaScript to sort of trigger the stuff that goes and gets the new posts. And then we've got a lot of data attributes. So data page is the page of results that I'm currently on, which is obviously the first one. So that's your paginated pages. Um, so when we grab the next set of results, it will change to two. Data max pages here. This is the total number of pages that are available uh, to grab. And you can grab this from the WP query object, uh, max num pages stores that number for you. Um, data per page is how many posts we want to uh, display per page in each page. So I'm grabbing that from the option, which is called posts per page. That's where you set it in the settings and reading panel in the WordPress admin. I'm setting a post type. Um, this is just in case I wanted to use it on a different archive, but um, you could hard cut this into post if you wanted to. I'm setting a load more label. We're not actually displaying that label, um, but we might want to do that for accessibility, or you might want the button to say load more. And in this case, <clears throat> I'm setting that as a translatable string. Now I'm setting an endpoint, which is something I'm going to show you in a second, which is where I have created an endpoint that will return the posts that I request. So um, I've created that using the custom rest endpoint, and this is the URL for it after the home URL, wp-json, in this case, purse, because that's the project version one, and it's going to get posts. <clears throat> and last but not least, I am telling uh, this div here what the spinner URL is. So that's the little spinning icon that we click. It's an SVG. It's in the theme in assets images, and it's called load more purple SVG. So that's how that works. So this uh, div here stores a lot of the data that we need 
when we're doing our request to go and get the posts. And then underneath here, we have the standard loop. We've got some count stuff going on here, so we can do something with the thing, but you might not want to use that. But we've got the standard loop, while have posts, the posts, and then we just get in a template part for each of the blog posts. And this template part here is uh, basically displaying this section here. So you've got the image and the title and it clicks and goes for a link. So that's how that works. <clears throat> I'm outputting the posts pagination. So that is the actual normal pagination because if JavaScript is turned off, I want this to still work and having that there would work. And I'm, I'll show you how we hide that in a second. Um, and then if there's no posts, we display the, the non-content non if, if there's no blog posts and the loop has returned an error. <clears throat> so that's how we do that. This kind of bit here is the important bit, storing all the data for the current query. Now, the next thing is we need to create an endpoint that we can use to <clears throat> excuse me, query uh, our posts. And here it is. There we go. So it's in endpoints. I've put this in the theme, actually. It's probably a bad place to put it, actually. You probably want to put it in a plugin, but that's up to you. You can put it where, where you find most appropriate. So this is registering my endpoint that I'm going to request the next page of posts from. So I'm going to register a new REST route, and you can see it's hooked into REST API in it. And that's going to be <clears throat> wp-json. Then it's going to be purse slash version one slash posts. Um, so this is registering the route. And then I'm passing an array to that, so it's, an, it's a get method. It's got a callback function, so when someone hits that endpoint, it's going to run my callback function, which I've declared just down here, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so that's how that works. So we've now got this REST route created. So let's have a look at this function, which is the post's endpoint output. So when someone hits the endpoint, it's going to run this code, basically, and this is the stuff that's going to return our posts. So we're going to pass this endpoint a load of requests in the uh, URL, such as post type, posts um, per page, uh, the page we're currently on, that stuff that was in our data attribute. And we'll come to that in a second when we come to the JavaScript. Um, but for now, what we're looking at here is, what we're going to do is, to start off with, we're going to create an output variable which is empty. So by default, <clears throat> the return of this will just return nothing. I'm going to set a post type if one's not been uh, passed. Um, and then if one is passed here, if it's not empty and we're passing the post type, we'll set it to the post type that we've passed. <clears throat> we'll get the um, the per page request and we'll set that to a query in the post per page. This is just going to be a WP query. Same with the page, what current page are we on? And that's passed in the WP query as paged. Um, I'm then going to allow someone to filter all these um, things in case they want to. And then we're going to run a post query, which is a WP query. And we're going to pass those query args in. So this is potentially going to look for uh, the next four posts that are on page two, for example. And then once we've done the query, we're going to loop through our uh, query again. I've got the same counter stuff going on here, but this is the important bit. I'm going to start output buffering, so nothing actually gets printed to the screen at this point. And then for each one, we're going to use the get template part again. So we're going to use the same markup as we have in the home.php file. Then once we've finished all that loop, we store the output buffer in the output variable. Object clean basically means get me the contents of the buffer and then clean it up so it's empty. And then we're going to return that. So now what output we'll have, we will have all of the results of get template part for each of the posts that were in the loop. And this is really good because whereas the normal REST API in WordPress will just return you the post data and then you would have to loop through that and put it into a markup, here I can just use my normal template part and I get the correct markup uh, returned that is exactly correct for each post, which is really handy. So that's how that works. And then uh, last but not least, if you're still with me, um, we've got our load more JS file. And this is just enqueued, in this case, I've enqueued it in the theme here. So I've basically said, if this is not the home page, the blog home, uh, the page for posts, don't do anything. And if it is, let's just enqueue this script called purse ajax load more. Here is its location in the theme, and we need jQuery because, yes, I'm going to use some jQuery in that as well. So that gets enqueued on the front end if it's the correct place, the home page. The home page being the blog home, not like the site home. 
quite confusing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use some jQuery. So we're going to start off by basically saying, find me every element on this page that has got the class of blog grid. Remember, blog grid was our holding div here, which is uh, here, which has got all our data attributes on. And then what we're going to do for, for each of these, obviously there's only one in this instance, um, we're going to start getting some of those data attributes from that div. And we're going to store them in some variables. So we're going to get the current page, which is one to start with. We're going to create what the next page will be, which will be the current page plus one. Makes sense. We're going to store how many pages we've got. That's max pages. And remember, we're getting all these from the data attributes. So dot data, max pages, dot data, endpoint, and so on. Store the endpoint base. So the post per page, the post type, the load more string, and get the URL of the spinner. So all that does that. Then we're going to remove the normal pagination that we added. So dot blog grid nav dot pagination is the class of the post pagination. We're just going to remove that from the page. So as soon as the JavaScript kicks in, it disappears from the page. Then the next part is to say, if there if we have more posts that we need to load. Okay, so we, 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 we do need a button that says, hey, we need to load more posts. So the current page is less than the max pages. So we're not, we haven't got to the last page. Then we need to add a button to this particular section to allow them to click. So here I'm just doing dot this. So I'm appending uh, this markup here to the blog grid at the bottom. And I'm giving it some classes and I'm outputting the image here, which is the spinner URL. So I'm adding the source of the image class for that spinner URL here. And there's the load more string, which goes in, which is the uh, load more. And again, I think we're hiding that for this particular project, but for accessibility, you want to have that there. <clears throat> so just to clarify then, the load more uh, button, let me just refresh this page. So what we're doing is if we're not, if we've got more posts to load, we're not on the last page, we're going to inject this button at the bottom of the screen and hide the normal nav uh, that we see at the bottom, normal post navigation. So once we've done that, we're then going to find um, the element that we've just added, which is this load more button. And we're going to invoke something when it's clicked. So you can see a dot click and then we're going to run a function when someone clicks that button. So we're finding the element with this class inside this which in this case is the uh, blog grid uh, element so we're then going to add a class to um, uh, the parent which is blog grid and we're going to add a class of loading so when we've clicked the button a class gets added that says hey these posts are now loading okay and then going to build up an endpoint url which has got our endpoint base, which is our REST endpoint. And then I'm going to pass uh, query parameters to that for per page. So how many posts are per page, which page are we on, um, uh, and which post type have we got. And all these things here are pulled from our variables up here, which are stored in our data attributes. Okay. So the endpoint URL is now something like uh, wpjson slash per slash v1 slash posts. Question mark per page equals four and page equals two and post type equals post. So those uh, parameters here that we see here are the ones that get pulled in to our um, our function here that runs on the endpoint. So you can see post type per page, page, per page, page, post type, they're all there. Then we're going to use jQuery's uh, get function to go and uh, get the contents of that endpoint. So we pass it the, the uh, URL that we want to fetch, and then we uh, have the function that, that runs when it returns. So when the data is returned from this endpoint, I am going to um, get, what's this doing, parent container. This is basically just getting the container of the, the, the blog grid, okay, so the parents of that. And then I'm going to append the returned posts. So in that parent container, I'm going to find the load more button that I added. Because remember, I want to add these to the bottom of that list, not the top. And I'm going to uh, add them before that button. So in our example here, here's the button. They'll be injected right here, just above the button. That'll be the new posts that come through. Um, then what we're going to do is update the current page number because that will now need to be updated to number two because we've, we've now grabbed page two's data. 
And then we're going to do some setting of these variables again. So the current page um, is now the next page because we're on the next page. And the next page is now the next page plus one. So it'll be now be like three if there is one. And then we're going to say if the next page is greater than the max pages. So if we basically we're at the last page, then remove the button. Remove the load more button from the page because there's no more to load. So we want to get rid of it out of the user's uh, uh, view. And then finally, once we've finished all that, we've finished loading the posts, we've appended them, we've possibly removed the button, we want to remove the loading class that we added before. Now, you might want to use this loading class to show your animated icon um, or hide your animated icon or whatever. So you can use that, that the action is loading and therefore that uh, takes place. Um, and that's kind of how we do it. Um, the real benefit I find from doing it this way is that the returned posts are already in the correct markup. So all you have to do is inject them at the bottom of your page straight after here. So if I click this, it goes and grabs them from the endpoint, which are returned in the template part, and then it just puts them at the bottom of this page, works out if there are any more. If there are any more, it leaves the button there. If there aren't, it removes it. And that's kind of how we go. Now, I know that was probably a lot to take in, but I hope you found that useful. Now, the good news is I'm going to create a gist of these this particular code, and I'm going to link to it in the description below. So if you do want to have a look at the code in more detail, run through it yourself, then you can do. I've really tried hard to comment everything. So um, please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below if you need some clarification on something. But hopefully... Um, it's quite uh, well commented and you should be able to follow it through. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found that useful, if not a little bit technical. Um, let me know if you did. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so. You can click the little button uh, beneath the video. Anyway, till next time, I'll see you soon.